People from around the world have heard about the mass destruction that Hurricane Ian has put in Southwest Florida. What they don't realize is what the residents have had to go through throughout the storm. For example, the infamous Fort Myers Beach Pier, once a spring break hotspot, is now a pile of rubble. This experience has been nothing short of eye-opening and breathtaking as Southwest Florida residents are trying to get back into normalcy. From food trucks to free food to just lending the helping hand to local residents to get back where they used to be. This is the BBN reporter Lucas Nicholson signing off here on Fort Myers Beach. Welcome inside, I'm Lucas Nicholson. Alongside me, Jake Norby, my teacher, ESPN Plus director up at Florida Gulf Coast University. What a good game we had here tonight. They did third quarter, got a little rocky for the Bull Sharks. They actually tied the game, the Wolfpack did. Luckily we got that layup sent us into the end of the quarter with a lead, just what we needed, and then really capitalized there towards the end of the game. For me, for the Bull Sharks, it was number 55, Wesley Mass. He had a very good game, didn't show off a whole lot in the points, but really played defense well. Banging those threes from beyond the arc when needed. Whitlock and Razzo, both phenomenal coaches, both first year full season coaches, very bright futures ahead of them. Bull Sharks improve their lead 8 to 10. That has been your post game wrap. This is Lucas Nicholson alongside Jake Norby signing off for the final time. From the beautiful beaches to the tall tops of the palm trees, we welcome you to Benita Springs High School inside the Benita Bay Athletic Center. Lucas Nicholson alongside Jake Norby, ESPN Plus director, my teacher, the St. John Newman Celtics. They just traveled up the road to take on your Bull Sharks and really capitalized on this game. I mean, the Celtics went lights out. Eric Morgan, TJ Zellick, they were number three and number 23. Let's take you back to the first quarter when they went lights out, five for seven on the three-pointers, and that really put the Bull Sharks in a tough position, having to regain momentum, develop that team chemistry. I mean, Brady Taylor, Wesley Mathis, normally phenomenal beyond the arc, just could not get in their rhythm tonight. So St. John Newman, they break 500. Your Bull Sharks fall 8 to 11. A lot of game left. This has been the post game wrap. Lucas Nicholson alongside Jake Norby signing off for the final time. The trophy sits in the height of glory on the sidelines on Lee Health Field. And what a sight it is to behold because tonight is the fourth annual Jaws versus Flaws game. But this matchup is unlike any other game because both schools have agreed to put the proceeds from shirts, tickets, and sponsorships back into the community and help out the surrounding schools in hurricane relief efforts. The 2-6 Benita Springs Bull Sharks trying to break a three-game losing streak go up against their rivals, the 7-1 Estero Wildcats, who took their first loss this past week against Bishop Vro, 57-10. Taking a look at the history between the two teams, it has been intense. In year one, the Bull Sharks fell short 17-14 after they tried to take a shot at the end zone on the last play, but the former quarterback, Xavier Estrada, could not complete. In the 2020 game, the trophy came home to Benita with a 21-20 victory after kicker Andrew Gomez made the extra point in overtime to seal the deal. And finally last year, it went back to Estero after a hard 36-35 loss when the same kicker Gomez missed the uprights. All close matchups in the series between the rival teams four and a half miles from each other. Friday night was no different. Let's take you into the first quarter when the Bull Sharks go right down the field behind a long run from Sessler on the opening drive. But the Wildcats defense got stingy and the Bull Sharks only managed field goal by Anthony Larkin. That lead wouldn't last for long, however, as Estero's Luke Denham takes it down the middle and could not be stopped running it all the way putting them up 7-3 later in the first with the Stero leading 14-3 the Bull Sharks answer in a big way behind a touchdown scamper by Rally Dreamer narrowing the Wildcat lead 14-10 the Bull Sharks kept in close in the first half but a late turnover led to a 21-10 lead for Estero at the half we take you into the second half where Estero is starting to pull away. Benita down by 11, but Susser tries to light the spark running it into the end zone, making the score now 21-17. 
Going into the fourth quarter, the Bull Sharks had every reason to believe they could pull off the upset. But Acero pulled away with several plays by QB Matt Wilson. That sealed the deal for the Wildcats as they came away with the 35-17 victory in the Jaws vs. Claws trophy.